How's it going, everybody? It's the Kids Fox here. This is my channel where I talk about anime, video games, and cartoons, most notably Sonic and Ninja Turtles. And today, if you read the title of the video, you know what I'm going to be talking about. It's going to be about Ninja Turtles and stuff. Um, so, I'm not going to really talk too much about the Mutants of Mayhem trailer um, because everybody else has pretty much talked about it. So, again, I don't really think there's much I can add. Um, now, I've already, I'm pretty sure a lot of people already have an idea of what I think about the trailer and stuff, given my community tab. Um, personally, myself, I don't think it's a bad trailer and stuff it looks all right um i mean i would still check it out but i'm not exactly a fond of like making the turtles act like i don't know 12 to 13 years old so, you know like usually at the start of every ninja turtle series they're always like 15 or whatever i mean maybe this would have been acceptable if this was like a flashback or something but since this is going to be the entire movie of the turtles acting and stuff like this i'm just like oh man but it is what it is. I mean, the animation looks all right and stuff. It's, this is definitely using the Spider-Verse animation. Uh, I'm not, like, super crazy about it, but, yeah, it is what it is. But, of course, the elephant in the room is, of course, they made April Black yet again. And this is what I've been talking about from uh, TMNT Rise, where I've been um, vocal about uh, all the changes and stuff that they've made in there. And going onwards, they're going to probably keep doubling down on stuff like that because they don't give a shit. They will always keep doubling down on stuff like that. They'll make April Black. They'll try to make Master Splinter overweight or something, etc. That's why I always like to call out Rise, because if you don't, then they're going to keep doing dumb shit like this. So, on top of making April Black, they make her overweight. Oh my god, I just can't, bro. Uh, this is what I mean, like, yeah. Like, when I first saw that design, I swear I thought April was, like, homeless or something. Or at least, yeah, I couldn't even tell. I was like, wait, oh my god, that's April with that... That dirty ass looking um, dreadlocks and everything. It was horrible. So no. So of course there's been a lot of backlash and stuff. People have been calling other people racist and stuff because they don't like the change. Like that's a that's that's a that's not only just a reach, but that's just a straw man. Uh, like even there are black people and stuff that don't like it. I'm black and I don't like the change. Uh, you can be white. It's fine if you're white and you don't like the change as well. It doesn't make you a racist or anything. Um, don't let people tell you otherwise. Um, hell, Young Ripple, one of my favorite YouTubers, he just did a pretty much an excellent breakdown on, um, on the always being black along in Barrage comics and stuff. Um, so I advise you to check it out. He actually explained it better than I actually could have. But, uh, yeah. But all I can say is, I mean, April has always been white. Um, yeah, I guess there's a rumor or something about her being black or something like that. Because April is, like, kind of based off of, I guess, Kevin Eastman's, um... Like, I guess she's based off of Kevin Eastman's ex-girlfriend, or I guess apparently wife or something. But, whatever. Um, still, she was white in the comics. She was white inside issue two. I actually have the uh, comics and stuff. I have the, uh, I don't have the actual, like, you know, paperback. But I have, like, you know, a collection of um, Ninja Turtle books and stuff. And, yeah, April was clearly white. And those people that say that probably have read volumes one, two, three... Or volume 4 of um, the Mirage comics and stuff. I know 3 is not canon, but still. Uh, April's always been consistently white. Even inside that weird-ass... Um, her family's white, too. But even in that weird-ass origin that uh, Peter Laird had kind of given her in volume 4. Uh, where basically her dad had created her using a magic pencil. Yeah, April's still white. <laughs> okay? So, anyways. But I don't want to make this all about me talking about how much I don't like April. And stuff. I've already wasted enough energy talking about Velma and then talking about uh, Shitty Boy and stuff. So today, I wanted to share with you my top ten uh, list of like best TMNT black characters and stuff. So these are like black characters that should either either come back or I just feel like they deserve at least some kind of acknowledgement or something because yeah, I just don't feel like they get talked about a lot. So yeah, uh, I want to jump right into this. I want to turn a negative into a positive. Alright, so coming at number 10, I have Guardian. Guardian is a character from the 2003 Ninja Turtle series and stuff. And obviously, he's the leader of the uh, Guardians and stuff. His true name is never really given, as far as I'm aware. But anyways, um, the Guardians is basically a group of people that serve under the Utram and stuff. They're basically like these ninjas and stuff. They've been getting into like complete like, you know, beefs and wars and stuff with the Shredder and stuff. You know, Utram Shredder and stuff and uh, his Foot Clan and everything. So yeah. Uh, that's who the Guardians are. So, and actually, Hamato Yoshi, uh, Master Splinter's master, is at the 2003 series. Hamato Yoshi also used to be a, a part of this organization as well. 
And he was actually kind of a badass inside the 2003 series. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Or he should probably be badass in general. But anyways, um, Guardian. So anyways, uh, I feel like Guardian, like not a lot of people would definitely remember this character uh, looking back. But if you like look back to the earlier like Ninja Turtle series, yeah, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. But he kind of fell into obscurity uh, and stuff uh, like later on when the series started progressing. But still. Uh, but anyways, apart from needing to be fleshed out and stuff, Guardian is actually a pretty solid character. He's likable. He has a cool design and everything. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, they can definitely uh, do something with this character, in my opinion. Um, but that's what I think about Guardian. So that's number 10. All right. So coming at number nine, here's another character that um, they can actually bring back into the TMNT series is Farachi. Now, if you don't know who Farachi is, Farachi is one of the best swordsmen inside the uh, 2003 series of Ninja Turtles and stuff. Uh, he was one of the uh, acolytes from the uh, Ninja Tribunal arc and stuff. So basically him, uh, Joy, uh, Tora, Adam, and the Ninja Turtles, all eight of them were like the last line of defense when it came to like, um, you know, saving the world and stuff. So basically that would automatically make him like one of the best fighters in the entire world. But anyways, Farachi is one of the best swordsmen and stuff. Dude has, like, the ability to summon a freaking blue lion and stuff as his animal spirit and everything. Um, and pretty much he actually has a pretty cool friendship with Leonardo. So, yeah, they could definitely uh, bring back Farachi and stuff and, like, you know, just uh, follow a little bit of this storyline to some extent. Not entirely to the T, but still. They could definitely do something with this character if they need more black characters, basically. All right, so coming at number eight, I have Chaucha. Now, Chaucha, basically, I'm going to tell you a little bit of his story and stuff. So basically, um, when he was a kid, Leonardo had saved his life, him and his mom, when they were getting robbed by some thugs and stuff uh, or whatever. And after, like, Leo had saved his life, basically, he ended up growing up to become, like, a police officer and stuff. And then uh, as a police officer and stuff, he got married and everything. You know, he was living the life. And so some guy came along and killed his wife and stuff so that pissed him off eventually he ended up quitting his job as a police officer he joined the foot clan became a foot ninja and then later on he he ends up teaming up with leonardo to get revenge on his wife's killer so yeah i think that was a pretty cool story um that's actually from tales of tmnt uh issue number six and stuff from the mirage series um i think this is actually like i think chaucha is actually a pretty cool character and i actually like the story and stuff they could definitely use this character he is black as well so, what the hell? Alright, so coming at number 7, I have Turtle Titan. Now, Turtle Titan, you're probably thinking, isn't that Michelangelo's Ultra Ego from the uh, 2003 series? Well, right you are. I'm actually talking about the second Turtle Titan from the uh, Team MT Fast Forward series, where in the future, um, Silver Century has a grandson and stuff who ends up idolizing Michelangelo and stuff and even took up his hero name and became the second Turtle Titan. So, in their um, Turtle Titan and stuff, Basically, he fights crime and stuff inside 2105, the 22nd century and stuff, and he uses his technology and stuff in order to do that. So, yeah, um, him and Michelangelo had an uh, episode and stuff together, and it was pretty nice. So, yeah, I mean, that's a black character and stuff, and he's much like Batman in a way. So, I don't know why they can't use him. Alright, so speaking about respectable black characters and stuff, I have at number 6, the Silver Century. Now, I'm pretty sure a lot of people know who the Silver Century is, if Casey watched the 2003 series. But, uh, but in case you don't, basically the Silver Sentry is the TMNT's version of uh, Superman. He's like a Superman parody and stuff. They definitely had a lot of parodies of superheroes and stuff inside uh, the 2003 series. Like they have nobody. He's like obviously like parody of Batman. They have uh, this dude named Al Gordon who is a parody of uh, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. So yeah, so the 2003 series definitely had a lot of uh, parody like kind of superheroes and stuff. But the Silver Century, though, was, like, the face of all that. Uh, he was a character that Michelangelo even looked up to and stuff and had it actually inspired to want to become a hero and stuff. So, yeah, the Silver Century. I don't know why they can't, like, use a character like that and stuff instead of, again, race-swapping characters like April. All right, so coming at number five, I have Carter. Now, in case you don't know who Carter is, and I probably can't blame you, Carter is a pretty obscure character, but unless you watch the 1987 series... Uh, and you had to watch the Red Sky series, which is the final season of Ninja Turtles, then you'll probably know who Carter is. But basically, Carter is a uh, teenager who has mutant powers and stuff, and he's also a student of the Ninja Turtles and stuff, so he's kind of like their sidekick. Um, but yeah, I actually thought Carter was a pretty cool character and stuff. 
Um, he actually has a pretty cool mutant form of stuff, and I would definitely love to see this character return again. So, yeah, I mean, they could definitely do that. If they need a black character, I mean, there you go. All right, so coming at number four, I have Angel Bridge. Now, whenever I hear people talk about diversifying April or making her black or whatever, and how people will just fawn at that idea, I'm like, why not just use Angel? Um, now, a lot of people don't know who Angel is because she's only in, like, the 2003 series, and she's in the IDW comics, so unless you read the comics or if you watch the old 2003 series, then you'll probably know, but in case you don't, Angel is basically, like, black, she's basically like a black version of April. But she's not exactly like April. I mean, I would say she's she acts a lot more like Casey, in my opinion, because, you know, her and Casey are actually uh, family friends and stuff. So they kind of grew up in the same kind of circle. But anyways, uh, Angel is a family friend of Casey who was once a part of the Purple Dragons and stuff. But she kind of left and became the superhero known as Nobody inside the IDW comics. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty much her background and stuff. Angel, um, she pretty much has some pretty good relationships and stuff with, like, you know, the Turtles Casey and of course her best friend Alopex so yeah they could definitely use Angel if um, again they need a black female character and stuff like I'm pretty sure Angel's dynamic is going to be a lot different from the Turtles and stuff compared to Angel I mean compared to April's because uh, the difference is April is generally like she's generally like a lot more older than the Turtles and stuff or not a lot but she's a little bit more older than the Turtles whereas Angel's a little bit younger than the Turtles and stuff but She's, like I said, she's a lot more like Casey and stuff, where, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, in that regard as well. So, I'm just saying, uh, they really could bring this character back if they need, if they want to talk about diversity, inclusion, and representation, and all that crap. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the big three. Uh, what are some of my favorite black characters inside uh, the TMNT uh, series just in general? Alright, so coming at number three, I have your boy, or my boy, Zever Montez or better known as Fishface from the 2012 series. So, Zever is definitely one of my favorite, uh, and probably one of my personal favorite team and T villains and stuff. He's an Afro-Brazilian convict turned into a cyborg mutant fish. I know, that's a lot, but hey, uh, I think that's actually pretty cool. Uh, when I first saw Zever uh, and stuff, I kind of just thought that he was just another thug or something, or whatever, because uh, he appeared in this episode where uh, Chris Bradford, that's, yeah, basically Bradford is his partner. He's like a Chuck Norris-inspired character. But anyways, Bradford, um, he was like the main villain, so I thought, oh, Zever is probably going to be, his, like, Zever is probably his lackey or something. But he was actually, like, kicking ass and stuff. He was taking it to the Turtles, taking them two on one and stuff. And then the other two were getting, uh, or with Bradford and all this stuff. So, yeah, Zever was actually pretty intimidating. And then when this man got his whole episode dedicated to him, uh, Never Say Zever, which is actually one of my favorite episodes from the 2012 series, I was like, oh, this guy's another breed of animal. <laughs> um, when Z like when Shredder put him in charge, he's like, Zever's in charge. I was like, all right, let's see what he can do. And I was like, oh, damn. And in my opinion, Zever raised hell. He almost killed a blind dude and stuff. He was uh, bringing out the worst in the turtles and stuff, everything. It was like, damn. So I definitely recommend watching that episode. It's one of my favorite episodes uh, back from season one. And probably in general from the 2012 series. But anyways, um, but Zever. So basically Zever, he's very antagonizing when it comes to like theft, knife, like knife combat and stuff, capoeira. And he also is uh, good at organized crime and stuff, you know. So stuff like that. I actually think that he was uh, more badass than his own partner, uh, Razar. That's the Chris Bradford. Or I mean, that's the, uh, well, that's Chris Bradford, but that's the Chuck Norris parody I was just talking about. But anyways, uh, yeah, and I think Zever had a pretty cool rivalry with uh, Raphael as well uh, and stuff. So, yeah, I thought uh, Zever was definitely a cool character and stuff. And I wish they would definitely bring him back as a villain and stuff uh, going onwards and stuff. Like, because I swear he needs more spotlight. All right, so coming at number two, I have Bebop and stuff. He's one of the funniest and then one of the most recognizable villains in the series and stuff alongside with his partner Rocksteady. Um, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before. But I actually liked his origin and stuff inside the 2012 series where he wasn't just another purple dragon uh, that was just mutated by the Shredder. But they had to change it up where they made him like this high-tech thief and stuff who actually sh like stole the Shredder's helmet at one point. Like right under his nose and everything. I was like, damn, that was a pretty ballsy move. And it kind of shows you his skills right there. Even though he got like chased by like a swarm or by a whole like squad of like foot ninjas and stuff. Uh, still, I'm like, damn, that was pretty impressive. So, yeah, he, like, really, like, riled up the Shredder. So that definitely shows you why the Shredder will go out of his way to pick somebody like that. 
uh, as his minion. So yeah. All right. So coming at number one, I have Baxter Stockman. Now I think Stockman actually is the main villain of the uh, Mutant Mayhem movie that Seth Rogen is producing. But again, this is worth acknowledging. So hear me out. But yeah. But of course, Stockman is the number one best black uh, TMNT character in my opinion. I mean, he's the CEO of StockGen or Stock uh, Stocktronics and stuff. Uh, he's the mastermind of the entire like TMNT series. He's a rival to April. He's built robots like uh, Mousers, Flyborgs, and stuff. He's the most valuable asset to the Shredder to the point where he killed Stockman, brought him back to life, tortured him to the point where he's nothing but a brain. So, yeah, that's pretty sick on Shredder's part. And that just shows you how much he really does need Stockman. So, anyway, Stockman has built devices that has taken out the Shredder and the Turtles and stuff, as well as turned himself into a cyborg. And tragically, uh, he's mutated before into like an ugly fly. So yeah. Uh, so Stockman was once uh, race swapped uh, back in the 87 cartoon, which kind of outraged some comic book readers and stuff who were, you know, keeping tabs with the uh, 87 series and stuff, or at least, you know, that read Mirage and saw the 87 series and that was like a complete joke. Um, and it just kind of makes no sense why they would just like, oh, now this day and age, they're going to just like, race swap april and stuff just like how the 87 cartoon race swap stockman um i know it currently stockman is white inside the uh, power rangers crossover but i feel like they're just taking inspiration or i feel like that universe is kind of based like their their version of the turtles is kind of based off the 87 turtles and stuff because they have white stockman and a lot of the other kind of like just the personalities and stuff it's kind of seem a little bit more in line in my opinion with the 87 turtles but that's just me though but yeah, even though Stockman was kind of race swapped inside the 87 cartoon and inside the Power Rangers crossover and stuff uh, to be a white guy, I still think it's a lot more preferable to have Stockman as a black guy and stuff because, I mean, as a white like as a white guy inside the 87 cartoon and Power Rangers crossover, Stockman kind of just comes off as like a pencil pusher and stuff. Like, you know, like, oh, like he's not really that intimidating. He's just frail and just, like I just said, a pencil pusher. Whereas at least in the, um, you know, like at least in the comics or anything else, uh, pretty much Stockman comes off as like he's crazy, deranged, um, you know, etc. Like he's like, yeah, intimidating and stuff, whatever, you know, at least. And I'm not just saying that because, oh, he's black and that's what makes him. I'm like, no, uh, that's just how the writing presents him. And Stockman is also, again, an original black character. So, yes, I would rather Stockman be black rather than him be white just as much I would prefer April to be white and not black. Okay? Um, but anyways, still. So, TMNT does have a good variety of black characters and stuff, uh, as we just don't need, like, a group of writers changing April and stuff, then justifying it by saying it was for representation, when it's really just tokenization at, at this point. Like, it really is just tokenization. They need an overweight black female character and stuff inside TMNT. Or whatever I'm like no nah, you're not representing black people at all for just by doing that please just stop all right so I've said once before that depending on how April is portrayed can massively affect how team and T projects and stuff can like make it or break it and stuff so for example like oh miscasting tokenization and stuff kind of tells you a lot of what's on that director or what's on their on that person's mind whenever they do that it's very lazy it's dumb and stuff I really yeah uh, that's why I don't like the fact that they race swapped April inside of the rise and then basically it had a whole ripple effect where they basically made April black in this too and then end up making her overweight uh, to add insult to injury. I'm like, oh my god, this is dumb. And then of course they miscast her hair inside, uh, inside, uh, what you call it, inside um, the Bayverse and stuff, the 2014 Ninja Turtles movie and stuff. That was pretty dumb. So yeah, uh, really does tell you a lot. So, like I said, it can definitely make or break it and stuff sometimes. But, anyways, um, but yeah, I'm not really a huge fan of uh, April and stuff. I mean, the trailer, as far as it goes, I mean, the trailer looked alright. Uh, I'm a little skeptical about it because I'm not really a huge fan of, like, well, the tone a little bit. You know, how they're going to just kidify the Ninja Turtles and stuff. And then also, um, you know, of course, Black April and stuff as well. And then this is also being produced by uh, Seth Rogen and stuff or directed by Seth Rogen. And Seth Rogen, I'm not really a huge fan of the guy. Uh, I don't really watch his movies like that anyways. But I was like, but he's known for comedy, I guess. And then, you know, when Santa Inc. kind of came out and stuff, and he called all a lot of fans and stuff white supremacists and all that stuff. We're not fans, but they he called people white supremacists, white supremacists for not liking his show. 
basically I was like, bro, this man's a moron or he's one of those type of guys. So, yeah, I don't have too much respect for him. But anyways, uh, this movie kind of just seems like it's going to be like Good Boys, but with Ninja Turtle characters, basically. Uh, like I said, I'll probably still check it out anyways. But uh, anyways, but that's just my thoughts. Uh, these are like 10 black characters that they can definitely use and stuff, or they can use going onwards and other TMNT projects and stuff versus always race, like race swapping characters like April or whatever, you know. But that's just my opinion. Let me uh, know down below what you guys think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is Fox, and I'm out. Peace.